Sydney, it was a little bit too dark to have a look at the daddy long legs that we were talking about, but we managed to find another one that's in a, actually a better position, but it's quite high up now. Unfortunately, in a sense, she's not the tallest person in the world. She's not a giraffe, like Jandre, for example, or Craig, because they're quite tall. <laughs> so we won't stay up here for too long. But how beautiful is that now? I've actually counted about six or seven different daddy long leg spiders living in and amongst the tent. Now, they are popular uh, sort of spiders to have around your home. I think they're also called cellar spiders. Or daddy long legs are, of course, um, one of the most common names out here, though I think they also call harvestmen daddy long legs. They're funny looking spiders too. Oh. Now, I believe young Tesla, who is one of my favorite young viewers, as well as Tula and, and all the young children who watch the show, and you said that daddy long legs are one of your favorite spiders. They're beautiful, aren't they? Now, there's this massive myth about uh, daddy long legs being one of the most venomous spiders in the world. And they're not venomous to us as humans. And they say that the reason why I was reading, I remember reading as a kid growing up, always being petrified of a daddy long legs. And my dad used to say, not knowing any better, oh, their jaws are not strong enough, they can't pierce the skin of a human. Now, this is, of course, untrue. I think they actually did something on Mythbusters a couple of years ago, if I remember correctly. I remember sitting at home when I was quite young watching. And I think they tried to put the theory about venom in I I'm trying to think. I don't know if it was a redback spider uh, that they compared it to, or maybe it was a recluse spider or something like that. I'm actually not sure which spider they compared the venom to, um, but definitely not the most venomous spider in the world. But that's not all that's out here. Look what else has been using this tent. Have a look over just over here in Essentia. Look at that little thing there. See this thing? It's tiny. It is so small you can see compared to the size of my thumb. That is in fact the leftovers basically of a caterpillar of some sort that either turned into a moth or a butterfly. Probably a butterfly, maybe one of the acreas because we're seeing so many of them around here. Or maybe it was, yes, it could have been because there were all those uh, Welteria plants that grow around the tent and we watched the caterpillars grow up. So I suspect it was one of the acreas. I think James came to the conclusion um, that it was one of them. So there's lots of these little, uh, little exoskeletons or chrysalises just left around the tent too. I'm trying to see what else we can find in here. More daddy long legs. Daddy long legs for days in this tent. They are Every, absolutely everywhere and well if, even if you just have a quick look outside you can you can actually see how dry it's become do you remember when it was all lush and green you couldn't see any sand on the ground it's all wearing away quite a bit now i'm really going to go and try and find a knob thorn flower so i'm going to have to go to, back towards camp because there's one flowering and i'm going to see if i can maybe try and throw something in the tree to get a flower out of it like i said no climbing of the knob thorn trees i'm not a leopard and my hand's a little bit too sensitive and I'll get scratched up. But I'm gonna send you back across to Byron. I'm not sure which dam he's got to, but he has got to a watering hole. Hopefully there'll be birds and lots of animals to watch.